Do I, you want me to open this or no? Yes. I always open it here. Yeah, we just right. back here. the Jeep in the garage. Woo. You can see here, you pull the fender, but you can see here. I got it, I got it. Broke the light, shut the light, it's broken. You ready? I am ready. ready. Okay. Ready? Ready. ready. What's up, Light Bright Nation? We're just getting back from Maris, so the next event is EJS. And I have a couple of things to fix. It's Kevin. Kevin did, Kevin did a little bit of damage while we were out there. All in good fun. We gotta fix the fender. We also got the new Baja design light, so I can finally put the other one on the frame chop. I think we're gonna put them right about here. We got two lights we gotta put on here. Like so. Two of them. I gotta build some out for that. Got a steering wheel to put in. And I think we got some other interior goodies to put in this video. Yep. So let's get started. Oh wait, nope. Also gonna put on some new wheels and tires. Can't wait to show you guys those. I think Kevin already showed you them. If he didn't, I'm going to show them to you. I think Beck's gonna do them. <laughs> she doesn't know yet. And we got three days, so we got our work cut out for us. So let's get cracking. So as we're getting ready for EJS, I decided to pull the steering wheel out of my Jeep. Now, you might think, Kevin, why, why would you pull your steering wheel out of your Jeep? Well, let me show you. So this poor steering wheel is shiny. You see how shiny that is? This used to have like a nice texture to it. Well, after 100,000 miles on road and off road, it's just become super shiny and kind of sticky and you clean it and black comes off, but it's probably because it's stripping some of the leather off with it. It's just got a lot of wear and tear. Now Jeep went ahead and came out with a 392 Wrangler, right? And with that new 392, they came out with a new steering wheel. <laughs> this thing is a lot nicer. It's got perforated sides here. It's actually got a thicker steering wheel. The whole thing is thicker. It's got these like little thumb spots. Uh, which be careful with that because um, you can break your thumb when you're wheeling and, and the steering wheel snaps. I, I always place my hands out here. It's just kind of one of those things. Don't ever wrap your thumb inside of here because if your wheel catches a rock, it's gonna turn, it's gonna break your thumb, possibly break your wrist. Now what's really, really, really cool, you wanna show them what's really, really, really cool? The new 392 came with freaking paddle shifts. Yes, that means I can now put on a new 392 steering wheel and put on the paddle shifts. Like that. They go on there like that, except that's the positive. That would be on the right side. Okay. Come on, Chris. Get with it. Jeez. <laughs> Hold on. Before we get too far with any of this, so our taser, this little taser, this little guy right here is the key to everything and anything you want to do with your Jeep. Uh, you actually go into the menu and turn, on, turn paddle shifts on. So we've got to update the taser on the computer to be able to do that. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and swap the airbag over. It comes with a wire harness. That's gonna allow the clickers, the, the, the paddle shifters to work. And it's just gonna all around nicer. Now, the only somewhat downside, it has brown stitching instead of red stitching, but my stitching's so dirty anyway, I don't think it freaking matters. <laughs> so they're the same size, but this is thicker. And look, it's like contoured here. It's just a it's nice steering wheel. Yeah, it's perforated. So. We're gonna go ahead and swap all the buttons and swap everything over, add the pedal shifters, update the taser, and then I'll be able to shift. Yeah, it's nice. Like when you're driving the Jeep kind of fast with the Hemi or you're going through the dunes, it's nice not having to take your hand off the freaking steering wheel to shift. So this will be, be very, very nice and I'm hoping it all goes very smoothly. So yeah, we're just gonna swap that over and then show you what it looks like. And we're back and it's done. Uh, I, I should have filmed that, but I didn't. It's really... We needed it, four hands for sure. Yeah, it was a lot easier with four hands. God, it looks good. It looks good. It feels good. You just have to put this spider in the new steering wheel and put the cover back on. So it's keyed. It's going to only go back on the same way. Oh, disconnect the uh, battery in the vehicle before you unplug an airbag because if an airbag went off while it was in your hands um, and your you face, face, yeah, it's gonna break some stuff. So disconnect the battery. And this, does anybody want this? this is gross. <laughs> it's like, it's like shiny and see how, see how that's not shiny and that, that's gross. I'll leave this around until this video comes out. Cause if anybody wants this, you can have it, I guess. I don't know, maybe I'll just throw it away. All right, I'm gonna go install it. Cause this is gonna be freaking rad. All right, she's back in. So these covers are the same because it's the same back plastic housing, but the covers that go here 
are not the same because this is a whole new unit. So these little plastic covers, I think I'll have to find somewhere else. I'll go look in the box and see if they included them, but I don't think so. But also that's not a huge deal, but I'm pretty sure I can order that online. Yes, the Jeep is filthy. We just got back from Maris. I have not cleaned it. I was just tired of the smooth, sticky steering wheel. And so this was the first thing I wanted to do when I got back was install it. But we're gonna update the taser and see if she works. You gotta go into the main menu and look for paddle shift and turn on the paddle shift and it should work, which is pretty freaking awesome. And this baby needs a bath, but. All right, well, when you got some more stuff to get ready for EJS, cause Chris's taking Phoebe's and I think Beck is actually taking her LJ. So we're gonna be out there with everything. There actually is some more prep we have to do when we were at Maris and I was doing the VIP day. I bent this light bracket again. Um, it split the light open down here, right there. So we're gonna have to put some caulking in that. When I hit that, it tore the fender away. So it just, it pulled some of the tabs, broke some of the tabs. Um, I drove it all the way home like this, like 80, 85 miles an hour on the highway. And it held luckily. Um, so we're gonna have to pull that off. Looks like we gotta put some new tabs in and get that resecured, but uh, it did hold somehow, which is pretty freaking awesome. There's a bit of work to do to uh, get her ready for EJS and then head down to Jeep Beach. And we have our trail takeover in Alabama. So that's gonna be pretty cool. All right, so next morning we got the little magical brain all updated. This thing, I cannot tell you enough. If you have a JL or a JT, you need a taser. Forget all the other ones. They don't do nearly what this thing can do. It even has trail turn assist now, which I'm just updating. So I'll have trail turn assist. But let's get this plugged in, get it programmed, and actually have paddle shifters. At least I hope it's that easy. Oh, and if, if you don't know, it's super simple. There's literally two plugs under here that go to a module under the dash. And then this just plugs in, boom and boom. That's it. I can't do it one handed, but that's all that is. You just look up under the dash. You'll see these two plugs that are plugged into its own module. And you're going to use this instead. Now, if you already have a taser, you don't need to unmarry it to update it. You simply unplug it, go update it, and plug it back in, then go in and find the new settings and change those. Okay, so it's pretty simple. Turn the vehicle to run, do not start it, wait for the dash to start up. And I'm gonna have a bunch of warnings because I have PRP seats and I didn't do the airbag delete or the seatbelt delete. I leave that on because now, when I open my door when I'm in drive, it doesn't throw it in the park. So the auto park has been completely disabled. Anyway, you're gonna go over here to the audio. So you go to audio, then you're gonna hold the left arrow and the cancel button and scroll through. I don't really have a good way of doing this for you right now. Can't, I can't, I can't. <laughs> uh, I didn't bring a holder in here with me cause my dumb butt wasn't, wasn't thinking. Let's see if I can do it like this. Oh boy. Oh, well. <laughs> All right, let's see if I can do it like this. So light show, I'm holding the left arrow and hitting the cancel button and scrolling through. Is it in performance? So tire size, no. <sighs> All right, sorry, this is very difficult holding the phone with a finger and trying to reach around the steering wheel to get to this. So I just accidentally rebooted it. All right, I gotta go through and I'll show you the setting when I get to it. Okay, so it's gonna be in other. You're gonna hit the center cruise control set button and then you're gonna go scroll through these guys. Blind spot, belt ding, no. Parking sensor, zero. The splash background, I have it set on Ruby. Dual climate zone, yes. Home link, yes. Paddles, I already just changed it to yes. So there we are, paddles, yes. We're gonna do a reboot. We'll see what happens. Fingers crossed. <laughs> Such a nice morning. Isn't this Beautiful. freaking great? Oh my God, we live in the luckiest place ever. All right, oil change required, it's done. Do we have paddles? Let's go see. Okay, I can tell you right now that it is so nice having a new steering wheel. It's like, it's like having a new interior. I'm gonna clean all this up so it's nice. Let's go over to manual mode. Let's see. Oh my God, it just worked. Oh. My goodness. That is amazing. Oh my God, yes. Thank you, Joe. Thank you, Taser JL, for making this work. Look, look, watch downshift. Boop. Boop. Freaking awesome. No good. 
So I'll have to drill these out and probably put in. I have metric ones, so maybe we'll convert all these to metric. All right, we got the fender back on. It's all secured up. Look at that. Ha! Ah, like a Jeep. Next, we got to put some tabs on here. These are some axle tabs, some shock tabs, but I think we're just going to weld these guys on here. Give us a nice bead on the top and a nice one across the bottom. We'll just put this guy on here kind of like that and weld it on. Then we'll get these lights welded up. You like? I like. They look good. Yeah, so there we go. Basically, Basically flushed with the bumper. Yeah, Kevin's like, oh, I'm gonna hit him in a wall. Well, I mean, unless you drive into a wall, Kevin. So there we go. That's where they are. So this how the light tonight back up. All right, what are we gonna do next? Hmm. Do you hate your crappy door nets? You know, you put enough crap in them and then they get stretched out and they fall and then eventually you shut stuff in the door. Ask Brittany, she's done it a time or two. Don't worry, American Adventure Lab has these beautiful mole packs. Racks. Mole pack racks? Mole rack packs. Mole rack packs. Look at all the jelly slobber. <laughs> but we'll have to clean that. Yeah, you simply just cut your net out and bolt these guys on. It was so fast we didn't even film it. Yeah, you can still like put some stuff back in here. Yeah, it's gonna keep Kevin from putting trash in there though. Exactly, yes. We're gonna find a mole pack and put a nice bag on here for Brittany for like the batteries and all the, all the phone stuff and chapstick and jelly treats. Gotta, gotta have jelly treats. <laughs> these things are sweet. Get yourself some, American Adventure Lab. <laughs> Woo! Cause you know they're the best. I got a surprise. It's not even really a surprise, but I've been waiting for this for like, I don't know, a whole 24 hours. Ooh. Oh, tire sensors. You know what that means. It means Kevin's getting wheels today. <laughs> Pretty excited, got tire pressure monitors today. Uh, Cause today we will be doing wheels. New wheels. Now, before we get into the wheels, we are also going to be running these really sweet Apex precision valves on these new wheels. These are pretty sweet. They have a provision for tire pressure monitors, which is what we're gonna be running today. So these will just go on the end of there. And what these are, are a fast or a quick deflate. You pull the cap off, then you pull this sleeve up, boom. And now your tire is deflating at a very rapid pace, almost at full whatever size hole that is. So it's pretty quick. And then when you get down to wherever you want, close the valve and now your straighter is activated again. You have to run this cap though, because it keeps the, uh, the sleeve from coming up. So when you run the cap, now the sleeve doesn't come back up. And now it's locked in. You can't pull the sleeve up. That's how they stay. So these things are pretty sweet. So we're gonna get these into the new wheels. Speaking of new wheels. So these are the Mesa Race 9312 bead locks from Dirty Life. Kevin wanted to change it up a little bit. These are custom drilled for eight lug. They are 17 by nine with a negative 12 offset. So these are all fresh. We're also gonna put in a freshly broken in set of 40s because Kevin doesn't like to run brand new fresh 40s. So these were actually on the race car for a couple of days. So they're just, just barely broken in. He doesn't like fresh tires. We're just gonna throw these guys on. We're gonna take the spare off of that and put it on that last wheel. Ugh. You ready, buddy? Let's go. Call me the Joker. <laughs> They're heavy, dude. <laughs> oh, yeah, they are. Got it! They look good. They look super good. I mean, not that those didn't, except those are just... I didn't coat those or clear coat them or do anything, but look at that. That's super good. And so, also, the face of this is way further out, so it hides all the lug nuts and hides a lot more of the hub. 
And then even in the rear, it hides the rear hub completely. That's like Hummer static, like it's... <laughs> <laughs> the lights, the bumper, the wheels, the tires. It's like a whole new Jeep, but not. It looks good. Good job, Chris. Good job, Beth. Okay. <laughs> and then you're done. Then I'm done. Then you're done. All right. Let's get it back on the ground. Good job. High five. What just happened? Don't want to talk about it. Are you sad? What did you just sell? We just got a deposit for the bomber. I mean, I know I put it for sale, so it's like, don't come in, like you put it for sale, but like, I didn't. He wasn't emotionally ready to part yeah, with it. Wasn't it. Like, <laughs> look, I mean, it's a race car and it should just sit. And if we're not gonna race, it's it doesn't a, make it's sense a, to keep. It's a like, very expensive. But it's a super cool talking piece. Yeah. You wanted to buy a stupid Buffalo to put in the living room as a talking piece. You wanted to buy an actual... <laughs> On our way back from the mayor's event in Texas, uh, we stopped off at like a travel center and they had a stuffed buffalo. Like and I think it would be great, like, like a full size stuffed, stuffed like buffalo. taxidermied buffalo <laughs> for like $20,000. I was like, that'd be a great talking piece in the front room. Yeah, you know what's a better Chokingly, talking piece? Obviously. A bomber. No, I don't. You, you want to park where you, how are you going to get the, I don't know how we'd get a full size stuffed buffalo through the front door either, but how are you going to get the bomber through the front door and park it in the living room? Take it apart, put it back together. <laughs> that chap, the chassis will fit through the side glass door. I'll knock out a wall. I don't care. Actually, no, it stays in the garage though. It doesn't go into the living room. Yeah. It stays in the garage. Yeah, it's, it's just, it's a very expensive talking piece. race car to, yeah, as for, to just be a talking it, it piece. It makes sense, but it doesn't make me happy. Like, that's the problem. I'm, I'm being a stupid adult. Uh, adulting sucks. <laughs> Realistically, though, adulting does actually suck. This is, if, if we had the means to keep it and it not... Look, I mean, we, look, we make good money and stuff, but we don't make the kind of money to just leave $100,000. No dollars race car like, just sitting like there sitting rotting. There, and, yeah. then, and then, what, like, it's not an appreciating asset. Oh, God, I sound like an adult. Shut this off. Shut, We're done. Shut this off. We're done. So now that we got the new wheels and tires on, I was being way too lazy, and Chris has got other stuff to do. I didn't want to balance these wheels and tires. And they're beadlocks, and these are used 40-inch Nitto trail grapplers, and there is no, there's no weights on this thing. I didn't balance it. There's no shaking. We're doing 75 miles an hour on the highway with no wheel weights, no bean bags, no beads, no, there is nothing in the tire. It is just a tire and wheel mounted, done. And you know what? Not what? only does it ride smoother than our F450, <laughs> yeah, it also true. rides smoother than the Bronco. That's true too. 40 inch tires used, race 40 inch tires on beadlocks, unbalanced, and it's smooth as butter. It makes zero sense. I don't, I don't understand it. I like it, but I don't understand it. Kind of like you. Miles. Take exit 16 for Utah 9 East toward Hurricane. What's up guys? It's the last day to pack for EJS. Uh, Kevin and Brittany are inside packing their stuff right now. They're leaving tomorrow. Beck and I leave uh, the following day. I gotta get her Jeep ready to go because she's actually gonna wheel it. Freaking excited. And then we're gonna basically camp out of mine, wheel out of hers. They're gonna wheel this. It's gonna be a great event. Uh, there's a couple more things we gotta do. I gotta get the rotor packs mounted on this spare tire because She's thirsty, <laughs> and they're not coming back after. We're gonna throw the spare stuff on there, and they're gonna do their East Coast thing. I don't know. Um, anyway, we'll talk about that, and then I gotta do a couple more things on Phoebe's before she's ready to go, and then on Bex, but now Bex just needs to be packed, so her Jeep's ready to go already. Anyway, let's get started. Or, anyway, let's continue. I got the rotor packs on, they clear the door, clear this corner when it's all the way open. Otherwise they hit the fender. 
Just gonna throw a zip tie through that so that this doesn't come out of there, but that should, that should be good enough. So picked up some uh, door bags, so we'll get these mounted on the doors in the Jeep. Nice. Pretty sweet door bag. Pretty sweet door bag. Brittany can keep whatever she wants in here because uh, there's a lot of room in these in this guy. It's a pretty big bag. That's about all you can get away with. Uh, the rest of it hits like uh, the door closes on the seat, on that PRP seat. So that's about all you can get away with. I got these on uh, Amazon. Don't know what they are. I got them a couple of months ago because we were gonna put them in Beck's Jeep, but we decided not to, and then I remembered I had them, so we're sticking them in the stepchild. Bam! There you have it. Door bag installed, super tight. Pretty sweet deal. And then it closes like right here. American Adventure Lab. Check these things out. For the JL, all you gotta do is cut your net out and screw these guys right on. Pretty easy install, takes a couple of minutes. It's super easy. Again, these door bags are just something off of Amazon I found and they work great. And there it is. Well, and that's it for the stepchild anyway. We've got the stepchild ready to go. We're just waiting for Kevin and Brittany. He's gonna pack it full of their personal junk and they're off to EJS in the morning, which leads me to uh, we gotta get Phoebe's ready. So this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna empty it out, which I already did. All this crap right here on this table. Oh yeah. <laughs> Utah plates, that's official. Uh, ARB fridge is mounted. So I mounted this guy up last night to like 1.30 in the morning. So she's out here, all ready to go. Check this out. So she's all mounted up. I got the ARB slide in here. Put this thing in here last night, tied into the battery, so she is fully running right now. Pretty excited about that. Oh yeah, my LED lights. LED lights are working. Picked up a little tiny table because I didn't want to drag one of the big tables that I have, so I picked up one of those. Got some more storage bins. Picked up a couple bottles of propane for the stove that's in there. Got my jet boil cup for the jet boil. I'm gonna start packing this guy up. What's over here? Oh, yep, some junk, hardware, lines. So now, I need to go through the table, clean up all the pots and pans and the bowls and stuff, make sure I got everything. Uh, my little blender, that thing is sweet. Again, I don't know where that came from, eh, but it's awesome. I think I got it on Amazon. Buddy heater, gotta take the buddy heater. And if you remember at KOH, we took that big old Furman generator to run the welder, and uh, it worked great, because I had to use the welder a couple times out there. Well, this is their W2100i. Uh, it's ultra quiet, supposedly, so we're gonna find out because I just put oil in it, just put fuel in it. We're gonna get this thing running. And if you're an E3 member, we got the hookup. So head on over there, check that out. We get discounts. It's one of our partners. Make sure to check out E3 Off-Road where you can get a lot of discounts on a lot of our partners' stuff. Pretty sweet. Anyway, I'm gonna get this thing fired up. Let's see how quiet it is. All right, here we go. Turn the fuel on, pull a choke, hit the star guy. It's not too bad. I mean, if you're at a campsite, I mean, it's not too bad, right? You can stick it out over behind the vehicle. It's not, it's not that bad. Not as loud as the one we took the KOH. That thing was a beast. Sweet, so now I can run my coffee maker in the morning. Ah! There's even an eco mode. calms it down a lot. Pretty awesome. So it's a 1700 running watt, 2100 max. Oh no, 2100 starting. Yeah, so that's the max it'll go, but it'll run at 1700. Um, plenty enough to run my Keurig in the morning because I'm fancy, you know. Super quiet, cool, can't wait. This little guy is awesome. Yep, so that's going in the truck. One last thing to do, make sure my kitchen works. 
because that would suck. So we got our propane hooked up. Hey! Sweet! Sweet! Perfect. Gotta have my coffee. I got this thing running. Let's see how long this takes. I love this thing. This is probably, this was, I jumped out on a limb, spent quite a few hundred dollars on this, but it's seriously awesome. I've used it a couple of times now. I'm not sponsored by Jet Boil or anything, but this thing is sick. It's a Jet Boil base camp. See, it boils water in like two minutes flat. Like, that is absolutely nuts. We're gonna talk about coffee in the morning. Woo! So yeah, setup works. Got hot water, man. Coffee time. I'm gonna shut it down, pack it up, pack all my pots and pans and stuff, get the fridge loaded, make sure I got everything, and then I gotta pack tools. Always pack tools. So that's what I'm gonna do next. Yeah. That's it, she's pretty much loaded, uh, except for the dry food and grocery shopping, which we will do on the way out. Uh, I need to get some water, you know, simple stuff like that on the way out. But uh, make sure you grab tools. Got my airline, I got tire plug kit, tire stuff in here. It's easily accessible, it's in the back. Propane hoses and stuff for the propane. I got a whole box of batteries, every battery you can possibly think of in there. Oh, apparently not. Oh, looks like I gotta get some C batteries. Gotta get an Ugga Dugga, make sure you bring your Ugga Dugga. Bag of tools, wrenches, torque wrench. I always carry a torque wrench in here in case I gotta do a tire. Uh, gotta, gotta have my coffee cup. Propane, propane accessories. There's all my cooking stuff in the fridge and my table. Oh yeah. And you think this was made for this. You think I designed it this way, but that thing fits super snug right there. Gotta grab a propane bottle for the buddy heater because we'll be out there for a whole week and it's supposed to be cold. Eh. Gotta get the tent, sleeping bag, air mattress. That pile is out back. I just gotta get it into the truck. But with that being said, I think we're just about ready to go. That's it. You ready to go? We're ready. We just gotta put all our clothes in the back of the Jeep and you've got a you got a lot of room in that. I still gotta put the tent. Oh the tent, yeah. Tent, chairs, all that. But you got jazz. a lot of room in that. It reminds me of my land cruiser. Anyway, that was a short, fast week of a lot of little things, like a little Yeah. We got here, I unloaded, I cleaned, and then we loaded right back up. <laughs> yeah, but new stuff. And look, I've got the, you put the rotopacks on, which is, the Jeep's back to its previous, like, life. Like, head across the country life. And I don't really run a spare, but I can't afford, we have too many events. I can't afford for something stupid to happen and then not have a spare. So, we're back to the spare, back to the rotopacks. We're ready to go. See you at EJS. Yeah, we're at EJS, so please don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. Remember, you can get all your merch. At lightbrightstudios.com. And decals. And decals. <laughs> they can get everything at lightbrightstudios.com. And Chris, Chris stuff coming soon. We're working on it. Soon. So I know. I don't have any time. I know. I know. I know. I've been keeping busy. Anyway, we love you guys. And we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. <laughs>